good evening. This is Pastor John with Grace Fellowship of Beattyville, Kentucky. And we are all set here tonight to continue a Bible study on our Tuesday Night Live Bible study. So <laughs> I'm so glad you were able to join us. And if you are joining us, uh, welcome. And we're going to break open the word tonight. Uh, as soon as we pray here, let's pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I do thank you so much for this opportunity to break open your word and to share your word in fellowship with like precious faith believers all over the world. God, not just people from Babyville, not just people from Eastern Kentucky or Central Kentucky, but people from all over the country and all over the world who are uh, seeing this broadcast and uh, I, I give you thanks for them, God, and I thank you, God, that you release a word tonight that transforms their lives, that changes them from the inside out, and then makes a difference in their external circumstances and makes a difference in, God, the things that are happening in their life. We need a touch from you, God. We need revival from your spirit. We need uh, the stirring of your word. We need revelation to come forth that is radical and life-changing and that we can experience not to just gain head knowledge, but that we can experience the fullness of and to enjoy the benefits of your presence. And so, God, this is my prayer for those who are tuning in, those who are watching in Jesus' name. I thank you for them and for doing miracles in their lives in the name of Jesus. And you say amen with me. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Well, open your Bibles with me uh, to the book of Nehemiah chapter 8. Um, we've been on a, a, a series and uh, Siri thought I said Siri, but I didn't. I said we've been on a series on talking about um, what faith looks like. And really um, what we're going to talk about tonight is a departure from that. Uh, it's not in that series, but as I thought about it before I clicked the, the uh, camera button here, um, I thought, you know what, this really, I mean, it, it ties right along in with one of the characteristics of faith that we have talked about. And, um, you know, it, it's, of course, if you recognize that I told you to go to Nehemiah chapter 8, we're going to look at verse uh, 10, uh, verse 9 and 10 there. And we're going to see that, uh, for those of you who already know what Nehemiah 8.10 says, and it's all about the joy of the Lord. And so um, we're going to talk about the joy of the Lord tonight, which ties into faith, because uh, in faith, after you've stood through resistance and you enter into rest, there, there comes a joy uh, in knowing that you've heard from God. That is part of resting in confidence. That's part of resting and knowing that you've heard from God. That's part of resting and knowing that you have what you've asked God for. You have what you have uh, prayed for. And, um, you know, even in the midst of uh, pressing through resistance, you can still have joy. And uh, I, I seem like I've talked about this recently, but, uh, you know, I want to say this again. It seems like I've said this somewhere recently. And I apologize. It's been so busy. I don't know what I've shared on this program or what I've shared on Sunday morning or on a Wednesday night in Lexington or where I've shared what, what I've shared where, you know, so anyway, but it's okay because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're going to hear it again. If I've shared it already, then you just receive it again and uh, it'll bless you in Jesus name. Amen. But um, uh, joy does not depend on circumstances. Happiness depends on what happens. That's why it's called happiness. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Joy is an outflow of the quality and the character of God. Uh, joy is a part of God's personality. And so when you are in the Spirit, when you are in a relationship with God, and when you are having fellowship and communion with Him, you can have joy even when there's a storm raging around you, even when the waves are beating against your ship, even when it's uncertain uh, in the natural whether you're going to make it to the other side, even though you're not sure you're going to reach your destination you can still, because of your relationship with God, because of the presence of Jesus, you can still have joy in the midst of the storm. So 
here's, um, here's Nehemiah chapter 8. I'm going to read verse 9 and 10. It says this in the New American Standard Version of the Bible. Then Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest, and the scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people were weeping when they heard the words of the law. Now, what had happened earlier in this chapter, in chapter 8, Ezra stood up and began to read the law of the Lord. Okay, So all the people started weeping and crying when they heard uh, Ezra reading the law to them. And so Nehemiah, he says, listen, this day is holy. It's holy to the Lord your God. Don't mourn or weep because all the people were weeping. That's what they were doing. And so he stood up and said, hey, stop crying. Don't weep. This is not a day to weep. This, is, this day is holy unto the Lord. So this is not a day for weeping. This day is holy. Uh, you know, in the New Testament, the Bible will tell us that, you know, this is a day that the Lord has made. What, what does it say as it goes on? This is a day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Okay. So verse 10, he goes on and he says, then he said to them, go eat the fat, drink the sweet and send portions to him who has nothing prepared for this day. Again, he repeats this. This day is holy to the Lord, uh, is, is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now that's the part of the verse that we hear quoted all the time. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And we just had Jerry Savell with us. And I remember a message that Jerry Savell preached years ago. And uh, it became a very popular message that Jerry, Brother Jerry preached. And um, in that message, he preached on, uh, if the devil can't, or if the enemy can't steal your joy, then he can't take your goods. <laughs> and so that's true. Uh, you know, it's when circumstances get inside of us and start to drag us down and take our joy. It, it can steal our joy if we let it. Uh, the things that are going on around us, the things that are going on in our family, the things that are going on in the politics of our country. Uh, I mean, if we think about things, the things that are going on in our economy, whatever it happens to be, if we let it inside to where it steals our joy, then the enemy can stop the manifestation of what you're believing God for. He can stop the manifestation of God's favor, and he can stop the manifestation of God's goodness flowing into your life if he can take the joy away from you. So Nehemiah here, he says, listen, the joy of the Lord is your strength. All right, now let's back up and look at this for a minute. So he starts out in verse 9. He says, uh, he taught all the people, uh, he says, this day is holy to the Lord your God. So first of all, I want to say recognize the day that you're in. Okay, this is, I'm going to give you some keys to walking in the joy of the Lord. Okay, okay. Um, Number one, recognize the day that you are in. This is the day of the Lord. Um, this is a day that is holy to God. And it's not just a Sunday. It's not just a Sabbath day. This is every day that we live is now holy to God. Why? Because you are chosen of God. You are handpicked by God and special to him. God says, in, in the scripture, he says, you are the apple of his eye. God loves you so much. So he has made every day holy. He's made every day consecrated for you. Amen. And so every day is a day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. So here's the thing. Point number one, recognize the day that you're in. This is not the day of the devil. This is not the day of evil. This is not the day when the devil gets a free pass, when he gets to do whatever he wants to do. No, 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 no. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is not the day the devil's made. This is not the day that the evil one has made. This is not the day that the enemy has made where, where we get to let him do whatever he wants to do. That day doesn't exist anymore. Okay? This is a day that the Lord has made. This day is holy unto God. And so what does that tell me? 
if this day is holy unto God, then no matter what's trying to happen, no matter what it looks like is going on, I know this is God's day. And in God's day, I can have joy in spite of my circumstances. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, nothing bad is ever going to happen. But in the midst of bad things happening, I can have peace. I can have the joy of the Lord. And that joy inside here, that keeps you strong. It keeps you from losing it. It keeps you from breaking down. It keeps you from sinning. You know, it keeps you from giving up. It keeps you from feeling overwhelmed and defeated. Okay? This is a day. Recognize the day that you're in. This is a day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad. And so <clears throat> get the picture here. So Nehemiah, he says, listen, this is a, this is this day is holy unto the Lord. All right. <clears throat> and uh, all the people were weeping when they heard the words of the law. And he said, all right, listen. He said, stop, stop weeping. Stop crying. Then he said to them, go eat of the fat and drink of the sweet and send portions to him who has nothing prepared for this day is holy to our Lord. All right, so next he gives them some instruction. And um, I, this is something that I haven't really heard preached much, but I believe it with all of my heart. Okay, what Nehemiah is telling them to do is, um, he's telling them to do things here. What does he say? He says, go eat the fat, go drink the sweet, and go give of your substance to people that don't have any. Okay, so he's, he's giving them three instructions there. Go eat stuff that tastes good. Go drink stuff that, that tastes good. You know, basically go have a party. You know, when somebody's weeping and crying from sadness, you know, that's the furthest thing from their mind is wanting to throw a party. Well, they're already throwing a party. It's just called a pity party Amen. <laughs> in some cases. Amen. But Nehemiah is saying, listen, go throw them a party. And this is the part, listen, that I haven't really heard preached much, but I believe with all of my heart, is that there are certain things that we can do. All right. Nehemiah is telling them to do something. Okay. So if you are going to tap into the joy of the Lord, um, there are certain things that you can do. In other words, it's not up to God. And this is the problem with religion. You know, religion wants to put all of the responsibility for everything onto somebody else. And they want to put a lot of responsibility for things on God himself. When God has given us the responsibility, amen, if somebody is going to receive healing, you know, Jesus has already been to the whipping post. He's already taken stripes on his back. He's already been to the cross. He's already died, been buried been raised again from the dead and ascended up into heaven and sits on the right hand of the Father. Okay, um, so he's not going to do it again. He's already taken those stripes. Okay, so he's not going to do it again. He's already paid the price for our healing. So now the responsibility is on you and me. If I'm going to receive healing in my body, just as an example, if I'm going to receive healing in my body, the responsibility is not on him. It's now on me to obey the word. It's uh, the responsibility is on me to receive uh, what God's already provided. Okay, so now when it comes to joy, um, it's not all of a sudden now that whole responsibility falls on God. God, it's up to God. It's up to him to pour his spirit upon me. It's up to him to touch me. It's up to him to make me laugh. It's up to him to, you know, do something with my circumstances before I can have joy. No, no, no. God has already paid the price for us to have joy. All right. So the responsibility rests on us again. Okay. Same thing with manifesting anything by faith. God has given us every tool. God has given us everything that we need. He's given us his word. He's given us uh, the measure of faith. He's given us uh, the spirit of God. He's given us the ability to obey God. He's given us hearing ears to hear uh, what God would say to us so that we can obey whatever he tells us to do. So in order to manifest by faith, the responsibility is not on God. The responsibility is on us. Okay. What I'm saying is, uh, I'm saying this. So first of all, <clears throat> Recognize the day that you're in. Next, recognize that the responsibility is on you for your own joy, okay? And there are things that you can do to tap in 
to the joy. And so this is what I used to tell people. I have preached this before. I said, okay, now here's what I want you to do. First of all, I want you to smile real big. <laughs> I want you to smile real big. I want you to put your hands in the air. I want you to start jumping up and down like this while you're smiling and try not to be happy while you're doing that. And then you just, I mean, you'd have to be a professional to stay sad while you're smiling and your hands are in the air and you're jumping up and down <laughs> like this, you know, it just makes you, I mean, so, so this is the thing, <laughs> this is the thing that you can do. Now, Nehemiah is telling them to do something different. He's telling them, look, go throw a party, go eat the fat, go drink the sweet and go share with them, give, you know, in the Bible, in the new Testament, it talks about being a cheerful giver, right? <clears throat> so, uh, we can actually give, and and you know that when we give to people with a genuine heart, it blesses the giver more than it blesses the person who receives. Jesus himself said that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Why? Because it does something. It changes something on the inside of you. So there's things that we can do that actually change how we feel on the inside, whether that's a physiological change by smiling and lifting our head up and putting our hands up and jumping up and down. And that just, it just makes you feel good. <laughs> and then some people, a lot of people have preached this, you know, just start laughing. <laughs> you know, the Bible says in Psalms, he that sits in the heavens laughs. If that's talking about God, then he's just being a great example for us that he's sitting in heaven. He's laughing. He's not moved by what the enemy's doing. He's not moved by what he sees going on on the earth. He's not disturbed by what's going on in the family. He's not at all depressed. He's not at all uh, saddened by any circumstance that's going on. He sits in the heavens and laughs. And so we right now from uh, Ephesians chapter two tells us that we are also seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so we can have the same joy. We can sit in the heavens as we do. We can laugh just like God is. And so, you know, I've heard it preached and taught them just laugh. You just start out, start out in the natural laughing and expect God to get on your laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and the joy of the Lord, let it flow. It's in you. Let it out. Amen. So number two, point number two is that there's things that you can do to access the joy of the Lord. Can you push it down? Can you keep it from manifesting? Can you keep it from expressing? Yes. It's all up to you. Your responsibility is either to suppress it or to let it out. I say let it out. Amen. <laughs> so let's go on and, and look at the rest of this. Uh, do not be grieved. And this is going to follow right along with point number two. Okay, responsibility is ours. And so if the responsibility is ours, then number three is obvious. Do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay, number three is obvious then. Don't be grieved. He's saying don't be grieved. What does that indicate to you? To me, it says, listen, it's your choice. You have a choice. You know, I, I know that there are um, clinical uh, people with clinical depression. There's people that, that have depression that have been diagnosed with that because of chemical imbalances within their body or for whatever reason. But people who are just depressed because of something that has happened to them. Uh, listen, you've got, there are cases where it requires a healing touch. It requires the ministry of an anointed servant of God uh, to minister healing uh, for some cases of depression. But still, it's up to you to receive that. It's up to you to receive that. And before we close this tonight, I'm going to pray for you, okay, that you be delivered from chemical imbalance. You be delivered from any physical abnormality that causes depression to exist in your life. And I don't care what they tell you to, you know, look at your depression like a black dog. That's all, I mean, that's prevalent. That's what they tell people, like it's your pet or something. No, it's not your pet. It's the enemy. It needs to be kicked out of your life. Okay. And so I'm going to pray for you guys before we close this program tonight, that you be set free from um, medicinal or uh, from physical from any, any kind of chemical uh, causes of depression, 
But for the rest of you that just, you know, have learned that if I walk around acting like I'm depressed and moping around and have my chin dragging the ground and, uh, you know, and it, so I get a lot of attention if I do that. Listen, get over that. Just put that behind you. You don't like that kind of attention anyway. You don't like the price that you have to pay to get that attention. And I promise you this. If you just find out who you are in Christ Jesus, if you find out that you're the righteousness of God in Christ, if you find out that God has saved you, he's sanctified you, he's chosen you before the foundation of the world, and he's raised you up with Jesus and seated you at the right hand of the Father, that your life is hidden with Christ in God, when you find out who you are, there is so much better attention from that than you would ever get by just moping around and just being depressed all the time because you choose to be, okay? And I'll tell you another thing about that. When you choose to be depressed just to get the attention from it, and I know you're not telling people that's why, and maybe you don't even know, maybe you don't even realize that's why you're acting that way. But you know what? When you do act that way, you attract negative things happening in your life. You want you wonder why why does why do, why do things always go wrong for me? Why do things always bad happen in my life? It could be you're choosing that because of how you are choosing to be depressed. Okay? Don't write me any hate mail. I'm just telling you the truth, okay? And like I said, I'm going to pray for you. But listen. So number 3 is you've got a choice. You've got a choice to be free. You've got a choice to receive joy. You've got a choice to live in the joy of the Lord. And guess what? You felt weak. You felt insufficient. You felt like you couldn't rise up. Well, that's because you haven't let joy have an expression in your life. Because he goes on and he says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So without the joy of the Lord, where is your strength? Your joy is not, in, your strength is not in depression. Your strength is not in sadness. Your strength is not in moping. Your strength is not in any of those things. Your strength is in the joy of the Lord. So you choose that. You do things that uh, cause you to tap into that joy. And guess what? You will begin to feel strength rising up from within you. Amen. Now, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> I'm to tell you what. Now, there is an anointing. There is an anointing on uh, my life. Uh, and, it, and it doesn't manifest all the time. But I think, you know, we're talking about joy. We're talking about it. And I've, I've told people, I have people in my life that tell me, you are so funny. And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to say anything funny. I'm not telling jokes. I'm not, I'm not trying to act funny. I'm just, but I've had people that just, I mean, they get around me. They can't help but laugh. And they're talking about how funny are you? are just so funny. I'm like, stop. I mean, it's, and sometimes it's bothered me because I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just trying to be me. I'm just trying to be truthful. I'm just trying to be honest. I'm just trying to talk and just, you know, be like a normal person. They're like, oh, you're so funny. Well, <clears throat> listen, there's an anointing because I'll tell you what. Uh, many of you have heard of the ministry of Rodney Howard Brown. And uh, I had, when I was in Kansas and I was youth pastor at my dad's church, um, years and years and years ago, there was a minister that came through our church and uh, he had been in Rodney Howard Brown's meeting and he had been under that anointing. Now, Rodney Howard Brown was who God used um, decades ago to bring that joy revival to the church. Okay. <clears throat> And I say that to say this, is that there is, there's going to be the return. And it's not going to be exactly the same, but uh, there's going to be return of uh, so many of these revivals of the past that are going to be wrapped up in uh, this end time revival that we are beginning to experience right now. And so that, that anointing of joy was poured out. I mean, in Rodney Howard Brown means you have people just laughing and laughing and laughing. And Rodney Howard Brown, he'd be like, I command you to laugh in the name of Jesus. 
<laughs> and people would laugh and people would just lose it laughing and roll on the floor and it was just a great time so I had a guy that came to our church that had been in a Rodney Howard Brown meeting and he laid hands on my brother and me and I I'm like I tell you what I'm like a spiritual sponge so when I see an anointing that I like I will just I'll just like a sponge I'll just soak that thing up and walk away with it and then I happened to have an opportunity to be in a Rodney Howard Brown meeting myself. Now, this is all about Rodney Howard Brown. This is about the anointing of a joy, okay? And so I sat on the stage in a church in Louisville, in Drum and Tom's Church in Louisville, Kentucky, when Rodney Howard Brown was in a meeting there. And I sat on the stage with other ministers, and Rodney Howard Brown was ministering. And I saw at one point he stopped. He went down the, the, uh, the center aisle, and he turned around, and he looked at all of us sitting on the stage, and he looked at me and our eyes locked. And it was like, I couldn't look away. I couldn't, I mean, it's like I couldn't move. And Rodney Howard Brown came up, he walked up onto the stage and he walked around behind the chair that I was sitting in. And he put his hands on my shoulders and I'm just sitting there, I'm facing this way. He's, so he's standing right behind me with his hands on, on my shoulders. And I had my hands down here in my lap and the anointing was so strong. It was like I felt my hands starting to sizzle like bacon in a frying pan. And I, I knew I'm sponging this up right here. <laughs> I'm sponging this up right here. And I'm getting that. I'm getting every bit of that joy anointing that I can get. I'm getting every bit of that anointing from Rodney Howard Brown that I can get. I'm going to take every bit of it. I don't care if he's ever anointed again. I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking as much of it as I can and leaving him with nothing if that's possible to do. <laughs> and, and it's not. I mean, he would end up with more anointing by giving it out. Amen. But um, that was a tremendous experience. And so we're going to stop. We're going to pause for just a minute and watch this. God sits in the heavens and he laughs. Then God is laughing through you, bringing judgment to the principalities and powers, wreaking total havoc in the camp of the enemy. Hallelujah. So let me leave you with this. No matter what comes your way, laugh. No matter what the enemy says, Take a moment and laugh. No matter what lie you just heard from hell, just stop for a moment, throw your head back, and just begin to laugh. Allow the strength of heaven to flood through your life. I don't care if people think you're crazy. I don't think you care if people think you've lost the plot. It doesn't really matter. In the world, when problems come, they consume alcohol, they smoke weed, they shoot themselves up, they snort cocaine. They go to the hell. They go to hell to get relief from hell. But we, the church, we don't go to the world to get relief. We come to heaven to get heaven's relief. That joy, that fullness of joy. Can you say amen? That will carry us. That will sustain us. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> so that's powerful. You just laugh. You sit in the heavens. You laugh. You don't. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter. The devil doesn't matter. Okay. The enemy doesn't matter. Things don't matter. Circumstances don't matter. You matter. God matters. Joy matters. Your strength matters. Okay. Choose life. Choose blessing. Choose the joy of the Lord. Amen. Let me pray for you right now. I said I was going to do that. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I pray for everyone, God, who is dealing with clinical depression, everyone who's dealing with depression that, that, that stems from the root cause of chemical imbalance or any kind of a physical uh, dysfunction in their body, God, that uh, has been clinically or medically diagnosed. God, I curse it in Jesus' name and I command it to come out of their body. I command an overflow into them right now of the joy of the Lord. I command laughter upon them in Jesus' name that breaks this attack of the enemy. I command it broken in Jesus' name. I command the hands of the enemy off of my people, off of my brothers, off of my sisters in Jesus' name off of God's people. Get off in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, that you release them to experience the joy of the Lord and the strength that the joy of the Lord 
provides in Jesus almighty name. Now for the rest of my brothers and sisters who are watching God, the rest of my family who are watching this video right now, I pray God touch them now. Touch them now with your joy. God, overflow them now with the joy of the Lord in Jesus name. Overflow them now, God, in Jesus name. Cause them to laugh, God. Cause that joy to bubble up right now where they are. Cause cause it to overflow from deep within their spirit man right now in Jesus name. Now just start to laugh. Start to just express the joy of the Lord. You do something to uh allow it to express. And I promise you, the joy of the Lord will, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, yeah, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, ah, ah, ah. hallelujah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God is good. Walk in the joy of the Lord. Come and be with us Sunday morning uh, at Grace Fellowship of Beattyville, 1925 Highway 11 South in Beattyville, Kentucky, 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. We will be so blessed to have you there. We believe you'll be blessed to be there too. In Jesus name, we can't wait to see you. Love you until next time. We thank you, Jesus. Jesus is Lord. And huh, at Grace Fellowship of Beattyville, we are having revival. Amen. Praise the Lord.